I am making a generator deck profile. This deck has been become even a whole lot of fun during Master Rule 5, now that I can actually use multiple cards from my extra deck and just one now. But this is a very heavy control deck that all most of your negation cards or interruption plays are all once per turns. So it's definitely a deck you need to know how to use. So, I'm moving on to the main deck now. I play three copies of Longfire Blossom. This you is basically let you search Mardell and Mardell then, or search. So you summon Mardell from your deck, and then Mardell lets you go off with your generator combos from there. However, once uh, Eternity Code gets released. I might replace this with Lopter, or I might just keep it in and play Lopter as well. I haven't decided yet. Because Lopter is a quick play Lone Fire Blossom for the Generator Archetype. And I play two copies of Hella, Generator Boss of Doom. Hella lets you tribute a Generator or a Zombie Monster on your field, then target a Generator or a Zombie in your graveyard and special summon it. And all of the Generator Monsters are once per turn. Hard ones per turn. And you can only control one boss monster with the same name. Then I play one Dovelgus, so that it just lets you tribute a generator or machine, a summon a machine or generator from your hand. Then I play one Nightmare Incarnation Igly. This card protects level 9 monsters from being destroyed by card effects, and it works well with Nagalfar, since Nagalfar protects by destroying. So there's that. Play to Nidhogg, Generator Boss of Ice. Nidhogg lets you tribute a worm or a generator monster that can negate an opponent's special summon if you destroy it. However, it means cards like Cyber Dragon, Contact Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, Pendulum, Link, those summonings. So monster effects that start a chain cannot be stopped by Nidhogg. Then I play two Garda, who is probably my favorite generator boss monster by now. And you tribute target one, or you can only control one, you tribute two generator or rock monsters, then banish an opponent's card in the field. Or one card on the field, so you can banish your own if that shouldn't come out. To Mardell, when it's summoned, you can start to add one, you can add one generator card from your deck to your hand. One Frody, you can tribute any number of generator or warrior monsters. To destroy an equal number of monsters your opponent controls, and then your opponent draws one for every monster destroyed. Which is why I'm playing a little tech card later on. And finish off the monsters, I play one Nagalfar, Generator Boss of Fire. If a card or cards on your field be destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can activate its effect, destroy one Beast Warrior or Generator Monster instead. And because it says instead, you can attempt to have it blow itself up, but it will protect it and it's still protected. The only downside to this deck is I'm noticing each of the level 9 boss monsters is a brick. So you don't, never want to actually see them in your hand. So if you see one in your hand you have Lone Fire, you're fine because you can summon Mardell. And then search one of the cards later on to then get two other generated cards that will actually help. And then I also play three copies of Kujikiri Curse. This is a once per turn trade in for level 9 monsters. And I play three copies of World Legacy Monstrosity. Monstrosity has the effect of you can target a level 9 you control, summon two other level 9s with different attributes and types from your deck in defense mode, and they're destroyed during the end phase. Which is why but their effects aren't negated. So normally you summon Nightmare Incarnation Idly with it. Because Idly can't it allows it so level 9s can't be destroyed. Or it has the effect of being able to start summon level 9 from your hand too, which also helps. Then I play the card that helps to unbrick your hands when you have level 9s in it. Generator Boss Quest. This lets you reveal a generator monster from your hand. Add two generator cards from your deck to your hand that have different names than Quest or the one you revealed. And each other. Shuffle your deck and then put the revealed generator on the bottom of your deck. Then the most important card in this deck. If you don't have it on the field then you're probably losing. 
and that is boss route stage. Do a boss stage if your opponent would draw or a card you add to your hand, including the draw phase. Special when I generate a monster from your deck to your, or special one from your deck in defense mode, and that's a soft once per turn. So you can if you activate multiple stages in a turn, you can trigger multiple stages in a turn. It's only hard once per turn effect is the summoning of tokens, which summons as many generator tokens as possible at a level 4. Light fairy monsters with 1500 attack and defense, and the only downside to it is it summons the tokens in attack mode. And that is it for most spell cards. Moving on to the traps, I play 1 copy of generator boss room. This card makes so that if your opponent had to activate a card or effect in response to a generator card, such as a hand trap to the field spell. You can disc activate it, discard a card, and then that opponent's card effect becomes each player draws a card. So you go stage, you summon, your opponent goes ash. You use this, ash now changes to each player draws a card. Then I play three copies of generator boss fight. This card lets you activate a stage from your deck or graveyard. Then once activated, your opponent draws a card. So this lets you... So fight will let you activate stage and trigger its effect. So this next card is a proxy for one of two cards that I don't know which one exactly yet, but at the moment, three heavy slump. So I'll go ahead and put a picture copy of heavy slump in front of the camera. It has the effect of if your opponent has eight or more cards in your in their hand, your opponent adds their hand to the deck and then shuffles and draws a field. The reason I want to use this is because it gives your opponent so much hand advantage that sometimes they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. So this kind of sometimes helps them with their hand advantage. I say help, but really it's for you. And the reason I play this is because of Frody. If my opponent, I'll usually wait to really have five monsters while I have five. I could Frody's effect, tribute all five generators, destroy all my opponent's cards, let them draw five cards, and only use heavy slumps, and only have two cards left. So that's why I'm playing Heavy Slump. Although if I if I end up not liking Heavy Slump, I'll just replace it with Palm Strike or Judgment. Then I play three copies of Summon Limit. This limits it so that neither player can special summon more than twice a turn. The only downside of this card in the Generator is it also hurts you a little because if you summon a Generator monster in your opponent's turn, then you will only get to summon that Generator and the token. This will probably end up coming out in once Eternity Code gets released for the new level 9 fairy monster that lets you tribute 3, special summon it, and then you draw 3. If I like it at all. And then the last card is there can be only one. This The only thing in this deck that there can only be one hurts is the tokens, because you only get one instead of as many as possible. But as far as the boss monsters go, this doesn't hurt them at all because all your boss monsters are different types anyway. That is it for the main deck. Moving on to the extra. Moving on to the extra deck, I play three copies of Your Mungander, Generator Boss of Eternity. This card I'm comparing to Slifer the Sky Dragon just because it gains 1000 attack for every material it has. Kind of like Slifer is gaining 1000 for every card in your hand. But it has the a quick effect of each player draws a card and then attaches a card from their hand or field to as material. And it's a quick effect, so it also helps to trigger a stage. Like I said, this, almost this entire deck is made, built to make your opponent draw. Then I play one copy of number 92, Hardest Dragon. This card I find is actually kind of funny to summon going first. Just because you summon it, you have five open monster zones. Then what you do from there is your opponent draws, you summon something like Utgarda or Frody. Then your opponent get you only get four generator tokens. Well your opponent can't deal with Heart Earth, then by the end of the turn, you can activate Heart Dragon's effect, use a material. So now every card they played that turn that's on the field is banished. It can't be destroyed at battle. Your opponent takes any battle damage from attacks involving it that you would. And if it's destroyed by a card effect while it has at least one material, you can special summon it and it gets 1,000 attack points for every card currently banished when it's summoned. So it's just a fun little troll card I have. And then this card's another fun little troll card because it helps for rank 9 spamming. And that is 3 9 lives cat. 
And it's just a card summoned from the graveyard can't be targeted or destroyed by opponent's card effects. You can use one material, target one level 9 monster in your graveyard or one monster in your opponent's graveyard and special summon it to your field. Then I play one copy of number 9, trying to be cute. If, if you're, it has three effects, I think it make it fun. Because it cannot be destroyed in battle. That being because if during the start of the damage step, when an opponent's monster attacks it, you can activate its effect to negate the attack. If your opponent has a monster stronger than it, you can use a material to attack directly. And if it's attacked while well, it has no materials, you can target two monsters in your or two cards in your graveyard, attach them to as materials. So you should always have material. Then another control card I'm playing is three copies of Phantom Fortress Inner Blackmere. Where you can use a material to activate one of four effects, which is banish a card from your opponent controls, banish a random card from their hand, banish one card from opponent's graveyard, or banish the top card of their deck. Then one of the most controlling and stupidly overpowered cards in the game is True King of All Calamities. It lets you declare an attribute during your player's turn. All monsters of heal become that attribute. And most of the declared attribute uh, your opponent has cannot activate their effects or attack. So against Salomon Great, you call fire. Now they can't use the effects of fire monsters on their field or the effects of fire monsters from their hand or graveyard. So this card's really dumb in certain matchups. The last card I play is one in Fentrack Earth Slicer. This card lets you use any number of materials to target the same number of cards your opponent controls and destroy them. If it destroys a monster in battle, you can attach that monster to it as a material. And that's pretty much all the only effects it has in this deck because it's not in fan track. That is it for my generator deck profile. If you have any ideas of stuff I can do to try to improve the deck, feel free to comment below. And thanks for watching.